My name is Ramsony, and welcome to Cobalt Core. It is a deck builder. It is a roguelike. It is also Space Invaders somehow. I uh, downloaded this the last Next Fest, so this would have been a month, month, two months, two and a half months ago. I don't know, something like that. Time isn't real. But in that period of time, Actually, we are going to explore a lot of uh, whether or not time is real over the course of this. But over the course of that period of time, uh, I was uh, able to play the demo, uh, which only contained the first floor. I played that demo for 50 hours. The game's now officially out, which means it's time to play more than that demo. Let's go. Cobalt Active ter Oh, Cobalt Active Terminal. Cat, got it. Loading Personality Core? Corrupted. Personality core patched. 6.02 seconds, encrypting memory bank at 0x F3, and then another line after that. Hello? Hey, wake up! Oh, my head. O okay, good. Your vitals seem stable. What's happening? I had to wake you all up from cryosleep early. There wasn't enough time to fully restore your memories. My memories? I needed those. I assume. Sorry, I just have no other choice. The command terminal will only respond to meat-based life forms. And there's a ship off the bow powering up their weapons. Everyone to the bridge, now. So, we're gonna get a, a, a basic tutorialization here on our first run. I will also note that, uh, one of the things that often draws me to games like this is their simplicity, intuitiveness, and extensibility. All this to say, you can look at these cards and you know exactly what's going on very, very uh, quickly, very, very easily, and you can intuit very easily and quickly from uh, any of the interactions that you might come across what the outcome is going to be, and you're going to be correct as well. That's good game design. Play cards to outwit your opponents. You can draw five cards per turn. Each card costs energy, which is up in its top left area, and a card's energy, uh, or rather our general energy, is shown down here in the bottom left. Three energy per turn, use it or lose it. Five cards a turn, three energy per turn. There's an energy cost to each card. We've been here before. Attack your enemy with attack cards. I was thinking of attacking him with a defense, but let's give that a go. You can always see what an enemy is planning to do. So an intent system. Hmm. This enemy intends to attack you for one damage. Let's block their attack with some shield. We can also see that we've still got one left enemy. Uh, one less. Uh, wah, ah. One energy left, rather. We're going to play out the rest of the turn ourselves. So there is a size for the hull of our ship. That is our general maximum HP. Uh, and then past that, there is a capacity for how much shield we can have at any one time. It's worth noting, though, that there are two different kinds of shielding here. There's shield, blocks up to one incoming damage, and it's capped by a max shield. And then there's temporary shield, blocks up to one incoming damage, but goes away at the start of the next turn. An important distinction to make, but I'm going to go straight for the damage. There was a multi-shot in here, so I get to hit him for two. Yikes, that is a big attack. We can use evade to dodge attacks, play this card to gain an evade. Will do. Statuses are shown below your ship. Some have passive effects, others are used as resources. Evade is a status that you can use to move around. So I get to keep this. Oh, <laughs> I keep trying to predict what the, what the game won't explain and then it explains it. I really should just have faith in the game that I played for that long. Uh, spend one evade to dodge the shot. Any evade you don't use will carry into future turns. All right, we got the basics down. We're gonna hover over cards, characters, and anything else for more info. Perfect. Perfect. So, as per the usual, anytime we see an icon for the very first time, I will make sure to describe it in, in as much as the game will describe it to you. Uh, and then afterwards, we will treat it as a known, especially because of how easy uh, the symbols are here to understand. So, pop quiz. What's the left one do? That's right. Temporary shielding, that's the purple shield. You can also see that the uh, barrier of that shield on the outside is, is dotted, demonstrating its uh, the permeability with respect to time. Then we have the draw shot, 
So that is the symbol for drawing cards, this would attack and then draw two cards. Scramble, which, as you might imagine, gives us two, uh, two evade, whereas the previous gave us one. And then lunge. This is the instantly move right for two spaces and then do one damage. So, I could carry a bunch of evade into another turn, but I could also just do damage, and damage is good. Although I already know right now what my next hand will be, because I've only got five cards left in my draw pile, so I don't want to play draw shot again. Because my next hand is already really good. I just use a multi-shot, I use a shield surge, and I use a basic shot. I get one temporary armor that prevents the incoming one damage, and do as much damage as I am capable of. A block shot, a basic shot, and a lunge gets us into a good position to end this fight on the next turn. And a multi-shot and a basic shot will do it. So, artifact time. Artifacts are held by the ship's crew and change the rules of combat. You can have multiple on each crewmate. This is the warp prep. Uh, as a colorless artifact here, this will be collected by Cat. The uh, ship's computer. Cat's cards provide basic utility. So this will give us one shield and one evade on the first turn. A little bit more power, love it, love it. There's another copy of Lunge there. And I'll take this opportunity to demonstrate the upgrade system. So this upgrade system is kind of similar to something like um, Griftlands. If you've played Griftlands, th there's a bunch of other deck builders that have something relatively similar to this. Griftlands is one that comes to mind for me. But ultimately, uh, what it is, is a, uh, a, a, a two-prong upgrade tree. You can upgrade to Lunge A or Lunge B, and they are different. Lunge A here has the ability to be flipped, which gives you the ability to change the move right twice into a move left twice, should you want to. Or, you can do one more damage after the Lunge itself. We've also got the Reverse Lunge, effectively. Faint moves to the left for two spaces, and then adds a temporary shield, and then finally a Whiplash. Moved left. Do two damage. Move left two spaces, rather. Do two damage and then move right one more space. Adding a little bit more damage to this deck is good. But I like a little bit more control over our safety here. Okay, I'm starting to remember. Right. Uh, the Cobalt? And the Hyperdrive? Yeah, you blew it up. Maybe. I remember vaguely pushing a button. And then a white light. Yeah, you blew it up. Guys, shut up. You have this argument every loop. I've heard it 517 times now. Fine. All right, we've got the coordinates of the Cobalt programmed in. Let's get there and stop this time loop. See, Riggs remembers. Usually she's the last one. I'm improving. Ooh, okay, we've got our general node system here as well. Uh, we've got standard enemy encounters, as one might imagine. Our green spaces here are a repair yard that allow us to upgrade cards or remove them. There's question marks. Question marks are events, as per tradition. And then these circles that are all Kalinia here. Uh, or rather, mutually exclusive on their own lines. Kalinia, in the kind of column sense, uh, are artifacts themselves as well. And then... The pink enemy is an elite of a kind. An unusually strong enemy encounter that rewards you an artifact. Howdy, how's it going? Oh, you know, same old, same old. What's this, like loop 400 or something? 517. Well, let's get you on your way. Can I get you anything? Let's upgrade a card again, thank you. I do want more damage. Faint would upgrade to... Ooh! Interesting. So I can either have it duck me two to the left and then also give me two of the temporary shield, or I can gain an evade and then move one to the left and gain one shield. I really like the idea of getting more evades more commonly. I don't want to get, you know, late in the game and feel like... Well, late in the game. Late in any particular fight and feel like, oh no, uh, the enemy is now about to hit me for 50 damage. I don't know if 50 is a number that's realistic. Uh, the enemy's about to hit me for 10 damage, and I would be able to avoid it with a single move, but I haven't got any of them. No! I'm saving myself from that awful, awful fate. 
so I could have two events and an artifact before an elite, or I can have an artifact and a repair yard. I'll take the two events. Our man shipped up ahead, and it's hailing us? Well, zzz, back, calm, zzz, der, how may I help you? <laughs> I'm infinitely glad I chose this path instead, as it just gives us the ability to upgrade two random cards to upgrade A or upgrade B. Yeah. Two of them get upgrade A. So the basic shot when upgraded with upgrade A becomes zero cost, upgrade B would have given it an extra damage. And then we also got the A upgrade on draw shot, which gets it to draw an extra card rather than do an extra damage. Do you need any other stance? No, no thank you. You may shut down now. Yes, command. It's hard seeing an AI like that in that kind of state. Hmm. The enemy is about to launch an object. Be careful, we don't know what it is yet. So that is this intent here. The enemy is going to launch something. It's coming from their missile base, so I'm going to give it a broad assumption that might be a missile. Lunge here is absolutely perfect. Dodge out of range of the enemy's damage whatsoever. And then let's even gain for ourselves a little bit more evade. Objects in the mid row, keyword, between you and the enemy ship can block attacks. They're much weaker than a ship and will be destroyed if they're hit by anything at all. So this is a heavy missile. It would do three damage. It's not going to, as I'm going to veer very slightly to the right, right? Yes. A fierce, potent evasive maneuver. Considering basic block and base, uh, basic shot are two of the weaker cards in my entire deck, I'm gonna use draw shot A to force these cards to be in the next cycle. Uh, sure. Or rather, to not be in the next cycle. Do damage. Perfect. We did do damage. I'll take two back, but that's handily dealt with by my shields. And the enemy is handily dealt with by my guns. Another copy of Scramble, there's also Sidestep. This is a Retain card, is not discarded at the end of a turn. Could upgrade to be able to draw a card, or to give it an extra space. It's also Boost Capacitors, a two cost card with Increase Your Shield Capacity. Your maximum shield is raised by one for the rest of the combat. Hmm. I do like shields. Let's take a boost capacitor. And then we're cutting back up, otherwise it would be an issue. How many resources can I really get realistically by the end of this turn? If I use block shot and faint, then I get to block all of the enemy's damage with temporary block here. And I'll pick up another basic dodge by the end of the turn. This enemy has gained a status. You might want to hover over it to see what it does. That is auto dodge. When fired upon, it will completely move out of the way left. Decreases by one each time it triggers and goes away at the start of the next turn. So if I did something like that, the enemy cuts over to the left. That said, I don't really have too much of a problem with that at all. I could take this turn for just a little bit more safety myself. Get some more max shield, get some more current shield, don't even really use any of my evasion. Realistically, I do think I'm probably actually well served by getting a huge amount of evade here. And the main reason I feel that is because when I have a very aggressive hand, I'm going to need to move, I'm going to need to shoot the enemy, they're going to move away, and then I'm going to need to move to follow them and then follow up with damage. So it seems like this is a perfect time for me to just gain resources. Lunge would be helpful. Mm, 
guess I'm going for another boost capacitor. So we can see here that the enemy has on each wing, on alternating turns, a self status application. One of those is very clearly the auto dodge to the left, and the other one I think is the auto dodge to the right. That's it. This is definitely our damage time. Basic shot and cop some multis. I'll just take this hit. Would have taken me two movement to get away from it, and then I would have probably had to re-move back again on a future turn. More investment than I wanted to put into it. Take a block shot and then faint out of their way. Oh, this is perfect. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted to see. We have the enemy trying to dodge to the right. So if I shoot them with the draw shot, they'll dodge to the right and then I can join back up with them by using lunge. That'll do it. Okay. Scoot options or big shield. Scoot has the ability to be flippable or upgrade to do a damage before you move. There's options. Uh, this is the symbol for draw next turn. Hmm. I already feel like I'm okay on evade, as we can see in that last fight. I don't think I need that. Big shield. Two energy in order to, after the upgrade, get five direct shielding, or three shielding and two temporary shielding. I'm gonna straight up skip there. It's time to do the thin deck. Energy refund. Gain an energy whenever you spend three plus energy playing a card. Okay, well that's gonna change the way I draft things. Bet you won't let us shuffle your ship parts. Please don't. It'll be fun, come on. Shuffle your ship and gain two maximum hull. Absolutely. Perfect. Our cannon is now over to the complete right of our ship. We've got cockpit in the center. <laughs> the wing connects the cannon to us. So if we start firing, we change our direction. I know you were cool. How is this better? There's a pirate hailing us. Uh, how can you tell they're a pirate? Well, they have a big skull painted on their hull. Ah. <laughs> oh, did there have to be so many characters so quick? It, it's fine. It'll it'll settle down eventually, I can only imagine. Surrender and drop your shields, or I'll have to drop them for you. Um, no. Have it your way. Gonna find us in an asteroid field. Watch out if this attack hits you, it'll also give you a status. We can see that designated directly above the hit. Not necessarily what status it'll give, just that it's doing that. And then in the mid row, we have all of these asteroids, which will block one attack before being destroyed. Hmm. I mean, I suspect I faint and then scramble and then get out of the way. I don't want to take three damage on turn one, thank you. Although with our cannon poking out the right side of our ship, this does give us an opportunity to keep our entire body safe while still connecting hits on the enemy. Let's throw a draw shot at them, hell yeah. Follow up with a multi shot. No shielding on the enemy now, although they are gonna be raising their shields this turn. I think I might need more dodge, so I'll gain some evade there. Yeah, the thing is, I always want to be on the left of the enemy. So this is a bit of a nightmare. I'll thank B to get some of the way there. Use my basic shot before I draw, because that basic shot is zero cost, so I want it in the next cycle. 
Uh, I can save two damage and one status effect by just moving over one more position, and then I feel a lot more comfortable just throwing a multi-shot at the enemy. The status they've inflicted is heat. Excess heat. If heat is three or more at the end of the turn, overheat, which means you take one hull damage and then reset the heat to zero. Very simple to grok that one. Let's faint again, send out the obvious ones. Now I could lunge away. And in fact, I will in order to avoid that three damage shot. Hmm. Got to use all of my movement to get back in a position where I can actually fire on the enemy. And that's not really how I wanted that to work out. Okay, I'll use Faint B. A quick basic shot and then get one further away from the enemy again. I don't want to overheat if I can avoid it. Maybe it has 3 HP. Rude. 3 HP is exactly more than I can deal with. I could use the block shot, but that would just take out the asteroid, and then I would have to use multi-shot against the enemy, leaving them on 1 HP. Guess I'm gonna lunge. They intend to do 1 damage to me here. Oh boy, 1, 2. Ah, uh, that was a real wash of a turn right there. Oh, that's a lot better though. Thank you for lining yourself up. So that we can knock you down. Okay, a smattering of uncommon cards here. We have Multi-Stun, which has the new keyword, Stun. Uh, an attack that carries a stun cancels the intent of the targeted ship part. So this would cancel an intent, move left, and then cancel another intent. That's pretty good, but if I cancel an intent and then I move left, the original intent was never going to hit me. Assuming it's a cannon, right? Because my cannon is on the far right side of my ship. Hmm. Let's also rev the engines, which gives you Hermes boots. Whenever you move, move one farther. You lose it at the end of your turn, and it retains. Also, it exhausts. And upgrades to move further or draw cards while doing so. Then there's second opinions, which I think will be my choice here. Draw one card of each color from the draw pile. For zero cost. Yeah, that's pretty good. Shield reserves permanently gain plus two max shield upon pickup. Yeah, I already had the shield capacitor in the deck. At the start of combat, premeditation would give us a glissade card. Uh, glissade is a card that for zero cost would move us two spaces instantly to the right. It's retained in hand, it's flippable, so we can choose which side it's on, and it exhausts. And the Dacadrum. Every five parry cards played gain a chip shot. A zero cost exhaust that does one damage to the enemy. Hmm. I do have a faint B in this deck. Perry tends to be more associated directly with damage, as she's our weapons officer. Let's take the Daka drum for that reason. Alright, let's get that Daka. And repair your time. Good afternoon. Is it? Can I get you anything? <clears throat> well, now be bossed. I'd like more damage. So a very easy way of doing that would be upgrading multi-shot to multi-shot A so that it does an extra damage and then just very comfortably using it every single time it comes up. It sounded like I was going to do something else there after, but no, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, Riggs. Are you picking up any hostile ships on the radar? No. Why? My sensors are going crazy over here. <laughs> Let's see. No, nope. no warp core signatures within a light year. Hmm. Switching sensors to visual spectrum. Ah, big crystal. Huh? Big crystal. Ah, big crystal. The Crystalline Entity. Each of its different sections is a cannon. Time for our end of first floor boss fight. Well, draw into the deck, use the multi-shot, 
And I think I'm going to tend towards the lunge here. Yeah. It's just another parry card played, getting us further towards the chip shots. Yeah, big crystal. Big, yeah, that's the main thing about it. Unfortunately, draw one card of each color from the draw pile is not going to be especially effective right now. Let's make sure I'm still setting myself up for a long time and a good time here. So I'll use a boost capacitor for increased shield capacity and a block shot in order to prevent one of the incoming damage. Hopefully I get second opinion relatively early on in this next cycle. Ooh, this wouldn't be an awful turn to just more shields. Boost capacitor, shield surge again. So second opinions would draw the entire rest of the deck right now. Not half bad, not half bad at all. And where I'm currently standing, I'm only going to take one hit from the enemy. Although, if I'm only going to take one hit from the enemy, do I really want to do anything else here? Here's the block shot. I will use second opinions here, just because I think it's the only way that I... Uh, only way that I end up using all of the rest of my mana. Sorry, energy. Wait, it's the same. Okay. So four incoming this turn, unless I decide to move, I suspect I won't. I could easily take two damage off with a single movement, though. Well, let's see how much the turn calls for it. Eh, it calls for it a little. Not over the moon about having no evade available. Yeah, because what if that three and the one and the one had all been here, and then suddenly I deeply need to evade? Wasn't the case, but it could have been! Time for a block shot. Multi-shot, and then if I use Faint B, I get the chip shot too. Also leaves me with an evade. Sure, I take some hits to my shielding, but that's what the shielding's for. To save me from taking those hits to my me. Just boost a capacitor. This is a uh, full block at this point. We can see, obviously, the enemy is scaling up the output, not only in individual cannons of the amount of damage that has, but of the amount of cannons that are actually firing. So I can't just try and live in this holding pattern. That's a good work multi-shot. I will definitely be lunging here to decrease the damage. Let's throw in a basic dodge as well, and then I will be taking two hull damage unprotected here. But I only have to do three damage back to the enemy in order to be able to be successful in this instance, and... There we do it. For what is worth, I knew this was upcoming. Ship status, plus two max hull, and then we full heal. And of course, as is customary, we've defeated a boss, so it's time to get a rare card. There's Ace. Gain one evade each turn. And this is three cost as well. Three cost is really important as we have the energy refund. There's also hand cannon. Actually, I should look at their upgrades first as well. Uh, so ace is three cost for the evade and also exhaust. Upgrading it to ace A is actually bad for me right now because it prevents me from getting the energy back. So it's, <laughs> it's the same as the base form. Uh, whereas ace B would give me two evade as well as that ace. Hmm. So instead of becoming a card that feels like it's doing a bunch of setup for future turns, it becomes a card that is also evasive in the current turn. That's really valuable. There's also the hand cannon here. That is X equal to the amount of other cards in your hand. Other, important, other cards in your hand. So if I draw a basic hand with this and I don't have draw shot, then the hand cannon is four damage for two energy. You know, it's fine, I guess. 
There's two different upgrades here, which is hand cannon A, draw before you calculate X. So that would be five then. And then increase the cost to three. We love that with the energy refund. And do two times the amount of damage as you have other cards in your hand. I really like the idea of going for hand cannon B, but it does also make it exhaust. So it's like one large shot. Hmm. But if I want one large shot, maybe what I want is parry. For three damage, attack. Your damage is equal to the total damage of all enemy cannon attacks, not just the ones that are currently targeting you. So in those final turns against the crystal, that would have been, you know, 10 damage easily. I'd also have the ability to uh, upgrade it to become sticky, to retain my hand, and then exhaust. Or upgrade it to no longer exhaust. I think I will go with the parry. Pick a boss artifact. There's the Hunter Wings. This is the Artemis exclusive artifact. Artemis, by the by, is the ship we're currently playing. If you end your turn with more than zero energy, your wings will retract and become empty until your next turn starts. So attacks will pass through there harmlessly, which means this wing would disappear, this wing would disappear, and all shots would miss through them. Berserker Drive. At the start of combat, gain one Power Drive. Power Drive is added as extra damage to all attacks. On the second turn of combat, your enemy also gains one power drive. Ooh. And then flywheel. Every tenth time you draw a card, gain one energy. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Nice! That's the first time you guys managed to beat that thing. Wait, really? How, how many times have we tried? You don't want to know. I'm gonna assume... <laughs> It's 500. It can't actually be 517, right? They might have died on the first enemy at some point. What even was it? If my readings are correct, I think it's some time of time crystal? I've seen microscopic ones in the lab and in Cobalt's particle accelerator, but never so large. Did the microscopic ones try to kill you too? Hmm. Huh. Not in a way that I was able to perceive, no. Let's keep moving. Now entering a new zone, the Sapphire Cluster. Huh. Nav system's taking us through this lawless sector. This zone is full of pirates, thieves, and smugglers. Like the last one wasn't? Everyone should have their sidearms on them at all times. You know, just in case we get ported. Oh, hell yeah! Do I get a gun? Everyone but you. <laughs> Flywheel, keep on turning. Okay, so parrying the enemy here would only be three damage, but I would also get an energy back for having done it. Mm, but I also don't want to take a bunch of hull damage just to try. So let's go with shield surge and basic block. Draw one card of each color. That actually seems like it'd be great for us right now, especially because I want faint B. Throw a chip shot in while I'm at it. And you know what? Draw shot. Let's get towards the next cycle. Ooh! Not only do we get towards the next cycle, we got towards the uh, faint B again. Love it. Get out of position, as well as gain myself another evade. And let's wrap this up with a, another basic dodge, in fact. Also, Riggs is now giving us an extra energy. Love it. Sure, let's try this. I parry for four damage. I have three movements, so after I do a bunch of damage to the enemy, I do have enough still to just walk away. Like that. We can see the enemy here is also gaining power drive the entire time, which is uh, why they're still potent. Move one over and ship shot. Got him. All right, pick another card. There's Momentum. Ah, oh, we can see that some of these are already upgraded as well. Momentum and Stun Charge in particular. Momentum. Oh, this is actually the upgrade I would have wanted as well to work with the Flywheel. Momentum, gain a shield, plus one for each time this has been played this combat. However, we already have the A upgrade on this, which draws a card and also does the other effect. 
Alternatively, I could have gained uh, two more for each time it's been played this combat. There's also Bolt, which is just a zero cost evade that exhausts and can either upgrade to give you another evade or not exhaust. And then finally, the Stun Charge B. Stun Charge B. Stun Charge! Your next attack will stun, goes away at the start of the next turn, and with the B we get a temporary shield as well. I'm definitely going to be taking Momentum A, especially considering the fact that I can increase my ship's capacity. I love that we have both of our uh, enemies on the same line, our elites, so I can deal with them the same. Let's go get another upgrade. Um... See, the thing is, I really, really, really want draw, right? Because draw is not only uh, the, the potential for better cards that I would want to play, it is also the energy to play those cards, courtesy of the flywheel. So, ah, dang. If I could get second opinions to not exhaust, that would be great. But instead, it's offering to draw from the discard pile or from the exhaust pile, if I should prefer. That said, if I am going to be drawing a bunch, one of the more powerful things that I'm capable of doing would actually be either upgrading or removing these basics. So maybe I remove a basic. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here, huh? Basic shot is removed. This part is brittle. We can see the skull uh, designating that. It takes double damage from attacks. There's also weak, which would take one more damage from each attack. The enemy also has a status, reflexive coating. Whenever the ship is shot, the part that was hit gains armor for the rest of the turn, so we can't just stand here and continually exploit the same weaknesses. Well, I'm going to draw one card of each type from the draw pile, and then I'm going to draw and gain a shield. All of this in service of rigs. Let's use a basic shot and then lunge to get out of the way. The part now has armor and takes one less damage from attacks. Lunge gets us away and then I'll boost capacitor as well for some additional safety. Ooh! So this is the mid-row object of a space mine. Destroying it will damage its destroyer for two. So if I can try and get the enemy to destroy this, we're on a much better track. Um... That said, this is a bit of a strange turn. I'm going to use draw shot. I'm probably just going to take this hit, frankly. For me to be able to actually do damage to the enemy this turn, it would cost me so much in terms of HP and uh, resources. That's it, I can make uh, rigs almost always give us an extra energy each turn, so that's what we'll go with. Love it, they're going to be destroying the space mine for me. I'll faint to take a block shot, and then just scramble for some more dodge. Incoming damage now five. That's a lot. Mm. I will actually move over two spaces. It saves me from three uh, from three damage from the enemy, and it also lines me up for the cockpit. Ooh. Yeah, I'll use a parry right now. Only does four damage because the enemy's armored. But I'll take it. And throw a momentum A in there as well. Alright, draw shot will even give me an energy this time. Love it. We can faint one across. Oh, it looks like playing the chip shot also counts towards the Dacadrum, which means you only actually have to play four other 
Perry cards in between. Which is exactly the intuitive result you would have expected, but might have assumed it wasn't the case for some, you know, unnoted reason. Uh, sure, might as well. Momentum? Damn, I didn't want to get my draw card. Alas. Okay, incoming is six damage. I can deal with six. That said, I'm not going to deal with six. I'm gonna lunge out of the way at the very end there and only take four. Man, Momentum A is going real well here. Very gradually working the enemy's HP off. The fact is that I just don't really have a huge amount of damage in this deck yet. Uh, and, man, the game is really, really keen on showing me the foible of that plan. Not that that's a problem at all. More than happy to hear it. Okay, let's draw shot. So the incoming is enough that I would need to double boost my defenses, and I will. Perfect. Thank you for lining yourself up. The enemy taking out that space mine will save us here, so I can use momentum A for full defense gain, and then watch the enemy take themselves out. Shield search momentum options. None of these really fix the core problem. Not that, you know, not that there's a huge problem with the deck at the moment, but there are some, certainly. They never start you with a deck that's just incredible immediately. That wouldn't really make sense, you know? Because of reasons. Let's take this extra basic block out of here. It really was just holding me back, Cleo. Morning, y'all. Three servings of missiles coming right up. I don't think we ordered that. A feint gets us perfectly out of the way. Although that missile bay is looking to apply a status to us, how dare it. Well, let's scramble, get a little bit more evade. That is a missile that does two damage, and we are engine stalled. The next one move will fail. Decreases by one every time it triggers and goes away at the end of the turn. Got it. Second Opinions would only draw me two cards at the moment, but the two cards it draws would also draw me other cards, so it's kind of much more appealing than it always might be. I'll use the lunge, which will fail to move, then I can veer off to the left. And if I'm comfortable taking one hull damage, I can do three damage back to the enemy, but I'm not, so I won't. And instead I'll shield surge. Oof. <clears throat> not what I wanted here either. That's okay though, I can feint over and take out that missile. Following up with a very reasonable amount of damage. Uh, if I... You know what? I will go with the momentum again. Guarantees that no matter what I do next turn, I get the extra energy from Riggs's flywheel. Ooh, this is a missile that's worth taking a bunch of notice of because this cannot miss. So if I veered off to the left, it would just rectify itself and come over for me. So I should definitely take it out before I move. And that'll do it. Maybe I'll just run away from the enemy this turn. Seems exceptionally reasonable. Complete tactical evasion. Hmm. 
Okay, again, I can draw for free, in terms of its energy cost at least. Let's throw a block shot and a shield surge, move one over, and then be completely safe again. Okay, throw a basic shot and then momentum. So I'd only be taking three damage to the heavy missile this turn. I really don't want to use every resource constantly. That's starting to feel pretty bad, so I'm just going to bank up some extra evades for a following turn. Okay. Block shot. Parry will only do three damage, but it will return an energy here as well. So if the draw shot draws the zero cost attack, we would finish the fight. Even if it didn't, I could have just moved out of the way and then would have been perfectly set up to fight the, uh, or rather finish the fight in the following turn. Boost capacitors, B. So this is two extra shield capacity as well as two shield at the same time. Not bad. There's deflection. This looks like it's both a, a, a dizzy and a parry card. Two damage, one shield, one temp shield, and then finally wave charge. Add a wave beam to your hand. And wave beam is a zero cost two damage piercing attack. The reason this is good is because this is a parry card that then forces you to get another parry card that you can play, so it counts twice towards parry's darker drum. And... I could even upgrade it to get two wave beams, although they get added to my draw pile. Okay, no, I would want it added to my hand and additional damage, that'd be fine. I'll take the wave charge. Piercer, your first attack each turn pierces, which means it ignores all shields and armor. Handy. All right, time for the double elite. Glarp. This enemy is using a cannon that is also brittle, so it'll take double damage while I'm firing directly at that. Uh, other than that, it just looks like it's about to do four damage this turn. Cool, let's draw some cards. Oh, that's some cards. Only makes sense to me that I end up moving over one here. Definitely start the momentum as well. Oh, it's, it's so difficult not to play the multi-shot there. And then follow up with a chip. Okay, and then I will scramble and cut one over. The enemy is going to give me a card. It cannot be dodged. Gotta get ready. The positioning of the enemy here actually makes it really hard for me to do much about him. So this turn I'm just going to gain resources because I would have to spend stupid resources to be able to do anything. So boost capacitors and then momentum. Um, and I can even lunge away from you if I wanted right now. Or if I'm willing to take one hull damage, I could get an extra evade. I'll do that. card it included was Abyssal Visions, a two cost that is exhaust and temporary. Oh, okay, so the cannon is only brittle when the enemy is firing from that cannon, the main one. Got it. They're attempting to do four damage this turn, rudely. Add the wave beam, and then use the wave beam, and then use the chip shot, and then duck one to the left, and then uh, <laughs> miss a damage that I easily could have just done if I did it before I moved. Oh, oh see, this enemy positioning is really not good for us. That said, the parry card is getting a lot better. Definitely gain the three shield and draw one. Oh my god, that launches a lifesaver here. dodge and end the turn oh wow they deployed a mine directly in front of themselves so they can hit it I wouldn't have done that but uh, I'm sure they have a plan 
Incoming damage would be 8 if I was standing there directly looking at the face of the enemy. Again, I really don't think that's for us this turn. I'm going to play out the Abyssal Visions and the boost capacitors. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have the ability to get a parry on them, which is really unfortunate. I may need to upgrade Lunge to be able to move two spaces to the left, because moving to the right is seldom what I'm going to want to do with this ship configuration. I'm almost always going to want to go to the left. Um. Yeah, I guess it's boost capacitors and drift very slightly out of the way. Uh, you know what? I guess I also should have just used a lunge to drift instead. Because that's another card played for parry. I'm gonna destroy that, and then destroy the enemy. What's the matter? Too brittle? We have a rare on offer here, Table Flip. All cards with flippable actions, such as move, are flippable for the rest of the combat. <laughs> well, okay, that saves us from having to get the upgrade. There's also Fleet Foot, whenever you move, move one farther, of course you lose it in the end of your turn, and then block shot. I'm taking the table flip, especially because I get money back. Money. I get energy back when I play it. It's, it's energy, it's money, it's mana, it's anything. It's just not what the game told me it was, which was energy. I shouldn't have used that in my example, but I needed to follow the rule of threes! Alright, now if I have a hull would allow us to heal one after each combat, shield memory keeps our shield between combats, which I do like. And then jumper cables at the start of combat, gain temp shield equal to your missing hole. I'll take shield memory, thank you. Ooh, a crystalline offshoot. There's no ship here. Shots fine at this point will miss. So yeah, it's a space empty, then a cannon, then an empty space, then a cannon, then an empty space, then a cannon. Hmm. Yeah, let's go defensive. Momentum and boost. Your turn. Incoming damage on this line is four. Nothing wrong with that. Hmm. I do want a table flip. Refund just kicked in. Didn't it just sort? Uh, I'm gonna flip faint. And just gain another evade. And another one as well. Ooh, second opinions with a full draw pile. Love it. I love as well that each of the different colors is each of the different colors as well as Cat, the ship's computer. So you get a basic card alongside it. A zero cost draw four is so good. Sure, it exhausts, but... You know, don't cry because it's gone. Smile because it happened. Hmm. Definitely seems like Momentum A wants to be played here. So does the multi-shot. It almost never makes sense not to draw with the style of deck I'm running at the moment. Incoming damage is four, that would be all my armor. But I could also just faint very slightly out of the way because of the flippability of, uh, of that faint. You know what? Let's get aggressive. Parry for six damage, also gives me a chip shot in hand, and then I'll use a wave charge to get a wave beam, and then chip shot, and then wave beam. And Barry is only two away from her next chip shot. Uh, I can also save a bunch of damage by moving one space over. Hmm. Draw one, gain three shield, love it. Do that and a shield surge. And heck, I'll add another basic dodge in there. That wasn't a good turn for a fence. That said, definitely time to draw here. 
throw the wave beam, another three damage, and that would give us the chip shot for another one. So incoming damage is six on this line right now. Probably not gonna be able to, yeah, probably not gonna be able to finish this kill, so move one space over and gain another evade and then finish him off on the next turn. Yeah, it'd look a lot like that. Oh, <gasps> the hand cannon has the B upgrade on it. Also new is payback. Payback, whenever the ship is hit, it immediately shoots a one damage attack. Also gives you a shield. And then now or never. Gives you three evade, but also you lose all that evade next turn. So it's very efficient, but also... A, very efficient, but it burns out. Hand cannon B, however, the amount of other cards in your hand, yeah, we do a lot of draw. Also, this is the three cost card, so it refunds an energy for us. It does twice as much damage as we have other cards in hand. Let's go. Shield reserves. Permanently gain plus two max shield on pickup. I will say there is a lot of value in that right now for us. Adaptive plating, gain one max hull and one heal each time you defeat a boss or elite. I just defeated the second elite on this floor. I'm probably not going to have many more before the end of the run. Revenge Drive. The first time you lose hull each turn, gain an overdrive, which does an extra damage to all attacks, but decreases by one at the end of the turn. I'm going to take the shield reserves and actually try and prevent myself from taking that damage in the first place. Do I remove another card? Or I think it's got to be upgraded at this point, right? Table flip could change its cost. Eh, I don't want it to change its cost again. It's good right now. It's refunding. Hmm. Yeah, admittedly, I just want to continue increasing the density of things, so I'm going to remove the basic dodge. Uh, I'm being hailed by a pirate in a cruiser-class warship? Hey, um, hi? Hello? Oh, boy. What is it? Put it on screen so we can all see! Uh, sure. Um... Oh, hey, it's you! What? I used to be so soft. This should be easy. Riggs, question mark? Uh, here we get shown the uh, weak signal. So, same as fragile for, for freighting. Hmm. And also, another part, uh, part is concussible. Any shot that hits there will cancel the intent that turn, so those intents are to raise temporary shields. Man, Table Flip is a great card right now. Why are you me? I'm me! Are you sure about that? Uh, let's get the Faint B to take us one more space over so I can use my final to concuss the enemy. Lined up perfectly with that weak spot. We've got three incoming damage, but we've managed to get some evade, and also the table flip is in play, so... I'll count that as a good turn. Definitely time for a draw shot. Three incoming damage this turn as well. Uh, ooh, that is a concussible side, and it's a missile bay, so if I wanted to, I could launch... Launch lunge, rather. Two spaces over and hit it to concuss it. That would also make this other missile bay... Miss May. So, let's do that. Big lunge across. Throw a chip shot and some draw in. Uh, second opinion for one card, buddy. You don't do that. have to boost capacitors here, and if I really want to avoid all damage, I would move one space over, but I think the move is more important. Hmm. One card of each color from the draw pile, that'll do it. Again, incoming damage on this line currently is three. 
Now if I can start playing my momentum, that'll work. Ooh, actually, I move one space over and take a basic shot against that missile so that I can make the area safe, and then I lunge across. Now I've only got two damage incoming. And I can continue to focus on bolstering my defenses in a way that scales while the enemy is scaling their offense against me. You know what? I think I will do 8 damage to the enemy right now. Boom. Especially because it pierces, so it goes straight under it all. That's what the hand cannon's for! And <laughs> Riggs is pulling out the gun. Uh, then I'd love to faint. And so I'll do so. And we will be taking one damage this turn unless I move again, but nope, I think I need that move. Hmm. Glad to see momentum again. And you know what, I'll add the wave beam to my hand, take out the target, use a chip shot, and shield surge. Just a much more traditional turn there. Okay, so with the enemy's damage at the moment, if I parry, I'm getting seven damage under their hull, so they'll only have three hull left. Perfect, perfect. Incoming damage on us this turn is two. I'll block shot and perfectly not take any. And I think I have the win here. How much movement do I have access to? Oh no. I would need to move one, two, three, four, four spaces. Oh no, I can do that. That's fine. This wave beam is two damage. It will hit the enemy's missile bay, which is weak. So it'll do three damage, and all of that is going under the armor. Goodbye, Riggs. Unfortunately, that was the cooler looking Riggs. Strafe. <laughs> Fire for one damage immediately after every move you make. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, yeah, right? Selected memory is obviously great as well. Choose a card in your draw pile and then put it into your hand. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking that straight, thank you. Demon Thrusters. Gain an evade every turn. You can no longer have more than three evade at any time. That is not bad. There's also Genesis. Gain one of two different common artifacts, then one of two different common artifacts, then one of two different common artifacts. Also, add three Genesis canisters to your deck, which is a three cost card. Although, that three cost card completely removes itself from your deck when you play it. And then the Hunter Wings, we saw that before. I'm going to take the Demon Thrusters to incentivize me to actually evade more often. Huh, that was interesting. Yeah. You good? Yeah. I can pilot the ship for a while if you need a break. No, really. I'm fine. It's just... She really was me. Perry, tell me honestly... Do you think I'd look cool in a black jacket like that? And her purple eyeliner is so cool! Riggs. <laughs> you absolutely would. That is the other cooler Riggs. You need to be like them. Steal their look. So this is where the ship has been taking us. What is that? It's the same energy signature as the Cobalt's Wall Drive, but without containment shielding, and energy levels that shouldn't be possible. It's pretty. Let's go kill it. Is that our plan? Mm hmm. This ship was definitely not made for these engines. Hence the three evade there. Oh man, I am keen to start strafing. Hmm, for the moment, though. 
Looks like this should be a good setup turn. This is exactly what I want to see. Second opinions, draw. One, two, three. No, I wanted a fourth card. A fourth card would have been great. This is now 12 damage. Enemy has 20 hull. Like, the, the hand cannon B is huge right now, but also, oh my God, I can literally use the draw shot before. Okay, I have to. And then 16. Hand cannon, baby! Let's also throw momentum in there. If nothing else, it drew me a card that I could also play. There's a multi-shot I could follow up with if I should like. Perfect, let's finish this turn off with something along the lines of a big damage. I'll take two myself. Seven hull remains on the enemy, so... Well, so nothing. Doesn't really change anything about what I'm going to do. I'm probably still going to just use the... The, uh, what exactly is the name of the card again? Momentum? And a draw shot. And heck, if I did a momentum, I would actually get another energy back as well. <laughs> and that seems like a great idea to me. move one over and then use faint B to move another over and regain the evade that I lost in the first instance. I could literally just move two spaces over again. Get styled on, I'm afraid. Uh, a big old parry and that pierces through the enemy's temporary armor. All right. Stun Charge A, which has the ability to give your next two attacks a Stun Charge. There's also a Big Shield, unupgraded, and then finally front-loaded Blast B. So on the base version, this is a one mana for four damage attack, but it also adds three fumes to your draw pile, which are zero costs. Um, are those that bad for me? I do have a lot of draw, so I can often get to and burn out all of those fumes very quickly. The version we currently have on the upgrade as well uh, is zero cost, which makes it even more valuable. Yeah, I'm taking the front loaded blast. Also, it's a, a, a parry card. Small consideration worth making on that behalf. Ow! My brain! Ah, uh, you all again. An extra planar being? Neat! What do you value most? Healing, damage, or evasion. Each of those is going to add a card to our draw pile, uh, which only has a single use. They're very, very impactful though. So the ephemeral repairs would give us four health back to our hull. The ephemeral blast is a zero mana seven damage attack. Also single use, of course. And then the Ephemeral Dodge, 045 Evade. Definitely not gonna go for the Evade there. I'll take the damage. Then it is yours. Thanks! Meowdy. Not in front of everyone, thanks. Can I get you anything? A lot of these characters have similar voices right now because they're all cute and cute characters get cute voices. Uh, they'll differentiate over time. Anyhow. Time for an upgrade. I can upgrade Stray. Five or two immediately after each move you make. Yep. Every second turn, basically, I already have the energy to play Stray, so I just need to draw it on the right turn and then it'll be ridiculously impactful. Um, I would prefer to get an upgrade after this. Boss, there's a weak repeating signal coming from inside this asteroid. This is not a place of honor. No highly esteemed deed is commemorated here. This message is a warning about danger. Wow, a warning left by a dead civilization. They feared their own creation enough to seal it away here for eons. 
a haunting reminder of the fragility of life and the hubris of the living. Let's get digging! Hmm. Ooh, set up a table flip very quickly and then a faint B. Ooh, I don't mind if I do. I'm gonna keep my powder dry here. The enemy has no intent yet. We are walled though, so we're walled in. A solid impossible wall, mid row object shifted into the wall of destroyed. Interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have the mana this turn for Strafe Boop. Which would be incredible if I did. Uh, let's go with Memento. And I don't need to scramble. I've got a lot of evade already. Wave Beam. Okay. Okay. Fight time then. Unfortunately, both of the cards in the draw pile are from the same color, so I definitely don't want to play Second Opinions yet. So my turn is pretty simple then. It's Boost Capacitors, Shield Surge. I can move two over to the left. I get another Evade back at the start of the next turn. And a Front Loaded Blast should be fine. Quick Basic Shot. I'll only be taking one damage. I'll keep my full shield up. Not full shield up, never mind. Let's hit the draw shot before I try and use a hand cannon. Oh, that's not gonna work. If I want to use the hand cannon, I'd have to use it now. I'm not going to, so. Draw shots. Oh, strafe again! Okay, maybe I need some more energy manipulation in this deck, something that I don't currently have any sort of access to. I need more of what I don't have. Thankfully our shields can definitely take it. Let's just throw some big damage hits against the enemy, I think. One card of every color from the draw pile. Ooh, how much hull do you have remaining? 10 and parry you for 12. Oh, wow, a strike that I can play. Oh, there's also a battle repair, which has been upgraded to its B side. So it is single use, but it gives four healing to the hull. I'm taking the strike that I can play. Draw two extra cards on the first turn is also pretty good. Every three dizzy cards played, gain a shield or permanently gain three max hull and heal three on pickup. Definitely taking the quick draw there. Okay. I still think it is probably remove a card for our sake here. Lock shot. Scramble seems a really easy one to get rid of. I can't imagine too many positions where I'm gonna want another to evade on top of what I can already do. I'm gonna get rid of scramble. There's also the Revenge Drive. Every time you lose, sorry, the first time you lose hull every turn, gain an Overdrive, doing more damage to the enemy, but it desists at the end, or sorry, decrements at the end. Ah, I get it. Brack says Crab Time, evolutionary perfection. Ah, uh, we will all one day join Crab. For the moment, though, I'll flip a table and shoot with a basic shot. And let's also draw three. Damn it, that's exactly kind of what I wanted to do. Ah, I really should have just left well enough alone. I would have had straight B and been able to play it next turn. Oh. Attack drone mark two, and it has a bubble shield. So it shoots a two damage shot once per turn, and it can take one hit without being destroyed. Yikes. That is perfection right there. Okay, I'm gonna move one over. Which, wait a second. Five for one damage immediately after every move you make. How did that take out the... Oh! Of course! Gear, sir. Ignore all shields and armor. That must count, uh, count bubbles. Okay, I mean, I guess I could lunge across and do that. 
I could just lunge away from it even. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, buddy. <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm bricked from being able to use the hand cannon for giant effect this turn. I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm perfectly off cycle with the cards that I want to be drawing. Uh, as I put those extra fumes into the draw pile, I literally, I, I could have looked before I played the, the fumes card, frankly. And then I would have known that my hand was primed to pop the hell off with a giant hand cannon. Alas. Um. You know what? I'm gonna use the hand cannon literally just to take out that enemy. That uh, missile, the Seeker. There are definitely better usages for it. But that's the one that I've elected to go for in this instance. Move one to the left, taking out that drone, and then I will lunge two back to the right. And then I'll put my hands on my hips. Uh, okay, multi-shot. Seems reasonable at this point, right? Just keep firing. I'll keep my powder dry on that ephemeral blast, though. Moving one space over would cause me to be attacked by the other drone, so... This is where I want to be. <gasps> Strike B! Got him! Now I launch a three damage shot every time I move, and I gain the ability to get another move every turn. That's exactly what we wanted. Let's gain some shield and wait for the crab to come back to us. This is perfect. I'm just gonna strafe my way along your ship, friend. Let's get some second opinions. One, two, three. And then lunge the other direction. Got him. We kind of killed the crab by crab walking, effectively. Ooh, options B. So it gives us a single evade. It gives us two cards that turn, and it draws an extra two cards next turn. That's four cards positive for a single card right there. Oh boy. Shield Surge upgraded to give two shield and one temp, and also an Escalate here for Overdrive. Can upgrade to either retain in hand or to have zero cost. I'm definitely taking the options B. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Uh Faulty jump point! We're way too close to a black hole! Who let this happen? If we don't jettison something right now, we're gonna be in serious trouble. Oh no. Really? Lose momentum A, lose draw shot, or lose parry. Or jettison half of my hull. <laughs> Why did you have to choose three of the most useful cards in my entire deck? I'm gonna lose that parry, I think. Phew, glad we pulled through. This loop is going too well to lose now. Do I have an important upgrade remaining? Nope, I'm actually gonna remove the block shot now. Is this our final waypoint? It is. Cobalt is embedded in that singularity, I think. Are we ready? Don't look so nervous, guys. Hey, Cat, how many times have we been in here before? Uh, zero. Oh. You guys will do great, though. Good luck in there. What do you mean? We can't fight the Cobalt while it's inside that singularity. Someone needs to bring it out. I'm uploading myself to the Cobalt now. Bye! Wait, hold on. There's probably another way to accomplish that. She's already gone. Or... <laughs> do you see what I see? That's a playable strafe, but... Alright, so we've got an enemy who has uh, a cannon in the center that is weak. To the left of it, they have a concussible but armored cannon. And to the right of it, they have another concussible but armored cannon. So multi-shot going to that center would be a perfect thing. Let's go with the straight first, though. Yeah, that drained a lot of power, but it's worth a lot of power. It did good. 
I can heavily reduce the damage that I take this turn if I go with the faint book. Actually, I could even just use Momentuma and then go one across. Perfect. I do want to increment the uh, momentum as soon as I possibly can. Oh my god. Yeah, I'll take Stripe, eh? Sure. Concuss. Uh, yeah, I only take more damage if I move another time here. I would deal more damage as well, but I'm a little worried about that at the moment. Although that has given us a charge of overdrive, in case that should become useful. Lunge wouldn't be a half bad way to get away from this. Yeah. And I'll boost capacitors and throw some trash away. It's okay, I'm getting more powerful while they're getting more powerful here as well. Let's move one across before I use options B to get another evade back. One card of each from the draw pile. Yeah, sure. Seems great. No reason not to really start using the Ephemeral Blast. I really should have thrown that probably the first time I drew it. Oops. Let's try and draw out some of the fumes. We definitely do. I haven't got Table Flip out yet. That would be very handy. Instead, I'll just play a bunch of cards that give me the ability to uh, move slightly back and forth, and in doing so, absolutely ruin the enemy with strafe damage. Oh, definitely time to throw out that hand cannon right now. What's happening? Systems report. The cobalt went critical. We're exposed to the core singularity. Are all the emergency blast doors closed? Yes, but we can't sustain this. The hull is literally melting. Come on, man! We beat the Cobalt! What else are we supposed to do? Hello. Who's hailing us? Identify yourselves. Yeah, and make it snappy. We have like 30 seconds left, Max. Hello, Broken Ones. Your poor, shattered time streams. I can help you, but there are other souls tangled in this time knot. Do you mean Isaac and Max? And two others. Now, who shall I repair first? Dizzy, Riggs, or Perry? Let's just go from the top down. Dizzy. Um, I have questions. I will hear them. This time loop. Do you know how to get out? Yes. Can you let us out? If you leave right now, you will be destroyed. Your timelines are too fragile to cross the boundary. Boundary? Oh! Are we in some kind of pocket universe? Ah, you must be the clever one. Aw, oh, thanks! Hey, that wasn't an answer. Dizzy's first memory. T minus two one seven days. So, basically, we focus three particle beams onto the crystal sample. Cool! This emits a burst of all kinds of subatomic particles and a controllable sphere of space-time distortion around the core, which... Hold on, hold on, I'm trying to write this down. Oh, don't bother. The physics really doesn't make that much sense to a drone operator. It matters to me if I'm going to be a participant in a giant explosion, though. That's fair. There's only a tiny chance of that, though. Oh, good. There's tons of cool science I would do, if we're careful. But Perry won't let me. Perry sounds very smart. Uh, the important thing is, you don't want to be in the reactor room when it's active. I definitely don't. 
you should write that one down. Don't go inside the particle accelerator. And here's how victory's green. Huge time there because I paused a couple of times to cool down my room uh, as as this room is very, very hot as soon as I'm in here for any period of time. This game, good. I like it. It's very fun. I enjoyed the demo a huge amount and I'm enjoying the game the same but an extensible past the level of the demo. It's, it only got better when I started to play the version that is full. There are links at the very top of the description down below for all of the things you might be looking for with respect to finding this game, probably over on Steam I imagine is, is one of the heavy links down there. There's also a playlist down there by the way for all of my content on this game path, present and future. And that'll pop up again later. Isaac, new character, our engineer. He can create and manipulate mid-row objects like drones and missiles. Super, super cool. Very, very keen to try and do a run with old Isaac. We've also got different difficulty levels here. I'll start incrementing these until I start failing consistently. And five ships. Each with their own unlock conditions. So there's a huge amount of replayability in our future here for this. Programming note, by the by, for folk who've been around for a bit. I'm back, baby. I still don't have internet in my new <laughs> location. It's been about two and a half weeks without internet at this point. But I have found a circumstance where I can just record a bunch of offline games. So now that this game is out, I'm just doing a bunch of recording on this. I don't know when they're going to start getting published. But uh, I'm back. Sorry for how long has taken. Blame my ISP, please. Uh, final programming note for everyone generally involved. Uh, wait, hang on. I gotta go to this screen at some point, right? Yeah. Is that doing the things? It is doing the things. My name's in Rhapsody. Uh, especially on the first episode of a new series, uh, doing the YouTube algorithm support things like commenting, liking, subscribing, all those kinds of things are very, very important on the first episode for a series. Would much appreciate it if you did. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we will see y'all next time.